have one of those days when you brought the wrong talk? <laughs> this isn't one of those. <laughs> I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have Okay, the author, you gave a copy of my homily to you ahead of time. You already know the lines. No. How grateful we are to be here today. These past few days, and actually over the course of the past couple of weeks, I've been reminiscing on just my being here as the Bishop of Steubenville, the uh, spiritual dad, so to speak, of the diocese. Because you see, it wasn't always that way. I wasn't born, obviously, as a bishop, carrying my crozier around in my crib. <laughs> no, there's a picture. No. <laughs> no, my first 18 years, the first 18 years of my priesthood, I spent in Michigan. Yeah, those must be all Ohio State fans there, I'm sure. No. <laughs> How many here are from Michigan? <laughs> Terrific. Welcome, welcome to the Diocese of Steubenville. And you, the bishop just did his shout out, okay, for Michigan. Well, the next three years of my priesthood, nearly three years, have been here. And for that, I'm very grateful. But you see, I didn't just get plucked from Rochester, Michigan, and then just settle right into Steubenville. And Pope Benedict at the time just wiped, washed his hands and said, okay, you're on your own. We did have some training. I was ordained on the 10th of September. On the 14th of September, I was in Rome. Not because I ran away from Steubenville, but we had conferences. The bishops newly ordained go to conferences once a year in September. We affectionately call it Baby Bishop School. And we're there for nearly two weeks and had a chance to visit with Pope Benedict individually at the end. But over that time, we had conferences, morning and afternoon. Not simply teaching us how to be bishops up here, but also in here, to be fellow clergy with our brother priests and deacons, fellow consecrated with our consecrated men and women, and, of course, as I mentioned, to be spiritual fathers. And for that, I'm very grateful. But when we were finally finished, which I think it was the 20th of September, we were sent forth. The 76 of us all across the world who had come together, I think 16 from the United States, we had a chance to network and share fellowship. But in the end, we were dispersed to go out and to actualize what we have learned, to enflesh what we have learned. Our classroom training was over. The constant education never will. What we hear in the gospel according to Mark today, Jesus informs the 12, their classroom training is done. It is time to go out and to participate in Jesus' mission of salvation by going out to their brothers and sisters. Jesus didn't say, your faith is private, now go home. No, just the opposite. In their 
journey to evangelize. Jesus instructs the twelve that they cannot solely rely on their own possessions. For the word of God is more powerful than every, any human gift in the universe combined. While the apostles did listen intently to Jesus' words, Jesus says, now is the time to do, to share in the mission. At this Mass, we have heard the Word of God. We celebrate the Eucharist, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Receive Jesus' body and blood. And so what's going to happen now, you are now going to begin Chapter 2 of this weekend. The organizers right now are saying, what is he talking about? Chapter 2? Are you crazy? Uh, yeah, but that's not the point. <laughs> I'm crazy for Jesus, of course. No, the chapter two. There is more. What am I talking about? Like the 12, you have had now your classroom training here at Franciscan University. And for that, I'm very grateful. Certainly, to Father Sheridan the entire administration here at Franciscan University, you are a blessing, not just to the diocese, but to this country of Catholics. And for that, I'm very grateful. And for my younger friends here, sisters and brothers in Christ, now is the time for you to go out to live as ambassadors of Jesus, as you are, preaching the word is more than a privilege, my brothers and sisters. It is a right. We live in an era in which, you know, there is obviously a lot of complaining. And rightfully so. I do apologize that my generation seems to be messing it up from time to time. Doing good things, of course, but not so good things from time to time. I loved playing sports when I was growing up. I loved played baseball, <laughs> wait, never saw that before from a bishop, or hockey, <laughs> I tree trim, so <laughs> I'm going to be getting a phone call over this, I'm sure. <laughs> but in sports terminology, my generation, I think, has given up a lot of runs in an inning. We have not righted Roe v. Wade, unfortunately. We have not certainly got, got it right when it came to marriage, the tragic decision by the Supreme Court. Marriage is between one man and one woman. But remember, this is not the bishop whining. This is the bishop providing instruction. And that's what you have to do. We can whine and complain, but that's going to do nothing. We have to evangelize. We have to instruct. And not despair. Does it, Bishop look like he's despairing? No, of course not. I've got work to do. We all do. You do. Right things, perhaps, that my generation has wronged. I will still work at writing what we have wronged, but we've got time. Because... The game is already won, to use another analogy in sports. Jesus has already won the game for us with his suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension, the Paschal Mystery. You and I have been given the right and the instruction to bring salvation history to a dignified close. Many of you young ladies will do just that as missionaries, as consecrated women. You will bear witness to the loving, the passions of Jesus. Or you young men who are discerning priesthood, you will share the real presence of Jesus in his body and blood with our brothers and sisters in such dire need. And those of you 
whose vocation is marriage, you're going to provide me with priests as well as with religious life. <laughs> Can't be more direct than that, huh? We have a mission, my brothers and sisters. Jesus has showed us the classroom instruction is over. We now move forward. You return to your respective dioceses, your homes, your parishes, to share the good news. Don't whine. Do something about it. Share the good news of Jesus Christ. You have been called, and for that we are very grateful. Jesus this day now, of course, is asking you and me as we leave the campus here at Franciscan, are you with me? I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you God bless you.